All right, this is it. This is your last assignment for um, the year, and it's everything that we've been working for since March. Yes, that's correct. Since March, you guys have been working on gathering evidence for this essay, and we've been doing it stage by stage, and so now we need to put it all together for a final essay, and these are some of your final reminders for your argumentative essay. Remember, we've been working with the topic on should Shakespeare be taught in high school? Yes or no? So you've taken the position of yes, Shakespeare should be taught in school, or you've taken the position of no, Shakespeare should not be taught in schools. We have at least six sources that we have been using since, again, March that you should have um, to support whichever claim you've decided to use. So again, what type of essay is this? What is an argumentative essay exactly and what am I supposed to do with it? Well, remember, it's a formal and a proper essay, which means you don't want to use slang, you don't want to use contractions, um, you want to use formal language, um, and you want to stay away from rep rep uh, repetitive phrases. Um, many of you say, this quote explains, this quote explains, that you don't have to state that, just give your explanation. So you want to use that formal, proper um, writing and grammar that we've been working on all year, especially with our Bricky Blunders. Um, in an argumentative essay, you're going to pick for or against a topic or a subject, and you're going to argue your point using the evidence from the article sources that we've had. So we've had at least six sources um, and the articles are still posted in Canvas that you can find. You guys all came up with um, quotes that you said you would use from the various worksheets that we've had. And you, again, are either saying that you're for the idea of Shakespeare being taught in schools or you're against the subject. And again, once you make your point, then you need to use the sources to support that. Some of you are doing a great job with that. Some of you, um, you're like half and half. And some of you gave me like some body paragraphs and counterclaims that didn't have any evidence from the sources. You cannot just make a statement and then not back it up. You have to have that evidence from one of the sources that we've used. Um, you are should have been evaluating a variety of research, and I've already given that to you. Some of you have decided to look up other things, um, and you can't. You got to use one of the six sources that I gave you. The only thing that you were um, told to look up on your own were the fun facts about Shakespeare, and that's only used in your introduction. Um, the six sources that we have, that's the variety of research that you should be using in the body paragraphs. Once we've gathered your evidence, you're going to use that in your essay. And in your previous notes, um, I explain and show you how to use that and how to cite the information correctly using a parenthetical citation after the evidence from a particular source. Okay, that's what I had just mentioned. So in your body paragraphs, um, many of you are giving a parenthetical citation, but you're not citing it correctly. Again, you need to go back to my notes and look at how to cite that information correctly. Some of you have been correcting and correcting and correcting, and you keep making the same mistakes. Um, you need to fix those for your final submission. Uh, use rhetorical appeals, such as emotion and logic and ethical appeals. We did a small worksheet with that. Some of you do a good job. With that, um, some of you are kind of just disregarding it and not using it in any of your body paragraphs. So that is something that I'm going to be looking for. And again, logic is things that you can prove statistically. Emotional, it could be things that people um, are trying to give in regards to their own personal um, experience that make you feel happy or glad or um, even outraged in the opposite. Your final essay will be six paragraphs, at least. I don't see any of you doing anything more than that, and it definitely shouldn't be less. And so why should it be six paragraphs? Well, first one, that's your introduction, and your introduction has to contain your thesis and a hook. That hook was supposed to be either a story about Shakespeare or fun facts where you kind of combined everything together, and then you present your thesis, which is one sentence that contains all three of your reasons um, and whichever way you've decided to go with your claim that needs to be in there okay some of you um you tried to do this 
um, and I gave you your full credit for your intro, but I made the comment on your Canvas pages that it just seems like it's just a bunch of stuff thrown together. You got to find a way to make it work where it flows nicely and it makes sense. There were a couple of you that did um, a great job and have really good um, introductions. So continue to work on that. The next paragraph, you've got three body paragraphs because you have three reasons. Your thesis statement gave me three reasons why I should or should not teach Shakespeare in schools. And so body paragraph one is going to contain reason one, and that's listed in your thesis. Okay. And then you're going to include that with support, support from um, the articles and your citations. Body paragraph two is going to contain reason number two that's listed in your thesis. And you're going to list that um, as your uh, topic sentence and you're going to include support, which means you have to have some article supports. And then your third one, same thing. It contains your third reason, which is listed in your thesis. Topic sentence includes support. Do not end any of these paragraphs with a citation. Again, do not end any of these body paragraphs with a citation. That means you're not ending it with a quote from one of the articles. You should be ending your paragraph with your final comment, your final observation, and connecting all of that information together. Again, look back at the notes. Um, there are various notes on introduction, body paragraphs, um, counterclaim, conclusion, all of that, even what is um, an argumentative essay. I gave you guys several video notes to look at and you need to do that um, in order to make sure that you're getting these paragraphs correctly. Your fourth body paragraph is going to be that counterclaim. So you have these three reasons already. You have paragraph one, uh, body paragraph one, two, and three, which are your three reasons for or against something. Your counterclaim is one paragraph that gives the opposite view of the original claim. So, for example, if your original claim is Shakespeare should be taught in schools, you've given me three reasons why it should. In this paragraph, you're going to tell me why you think that the other side, that it shouldn't be taught, they also have some valid points. So you're just giving the opposite viewpoint in one paragraph. And remember, you still have to give some um, evidence that supports your counterclaim. And again, if you're having trouble with that counterclaim, you need to go back to the video and take a look at that in the notes. And then your last paragraph, the sixth one, is going to be uh, your conclusion. And it's not just, you know, in conclusion, remember in the notes, if you, if you watched it, you don't use in conclusion. You just are um, writing a paragraph that kind of, it says, provides a bridge back to your thesis and introduction. It refers back to the hook. It refers back to some of the reasons. Um, and again, you need to look at the conclusion notes that I had given you. But these are all of the paragraphs that you're going to include in your essay. Now, if you've kept up on your work, all of it is really done already. You've written all of these. All you need to do really is put them together in a Google Doc and make corrections, the corrections that I've asked you to make, or just go back and um, edit, change things around a little bit, beef it up, do what you have to do, but the work is really, or should be, already done. So just some reminders, a paragraph, or uh, your introductory paragraph, sorry. Um, it's a paragraph that's going to capture the reader's attention. And again, if it's all over the place, um, you're starting off on a bad foot. And so you want to make sure that it flows nicely together, containing those interesting facts or some background information. You want to make sure that you have a thesis statement which is one sentence. A couple of you are still giving me multiple sentences, or if you give me one sentence, it doesn't have the three reasons that support your position. So you wanna make sure that the thesis statement, one sentence contains all three reasons that supports your position, and that is in your introduction. Okay, and again, making sure that it flows together and makes sense. For all three of those body paragraphs, you have to make sure that it contains the reason, not just the first, but the second and the third reason from the thesis and states what the paragraph is going to be about. You need a topic sentence, okay, which should be your own words. You do not use I or we or you. You don't want to say, um, you know, in my opinion or I think we um, should do this or believe this, or you can obviously see. You don't need to say that. You just need to get rid of those words and make a statement. 
you need quotes from the texts, which we've been working from um, for the past couple of weeks. Those are those articles. And so you need to quote them, make sure that your quotes make sense. And if you're saying that Shakespeare should be taught in schools and you use a quote that just says that they do use it, but that doesn't say why, there's no connection there. So you need to make sure that that is a good quote that you're using to back up what it is that you're saying. So those quotes need to be introduced, which um, is your tagline, giving the title, the author, the genre, um, and making sure that your citation is done correctly. In those paragraphs, you want to make sure that you have a concluding sentence that wraps it up, that rewords the topic, um, and is usually more than one sentence. I had given you a couple of examples of body paragraphs that your fellow students had written that were pretty good, so you want to take a look at those and see how they did them. Um, you can always go online and, and look at body paragraphs too and see how other people have written those to give you an idea how to better source your body paragraphs. Your counterclaim. Um, at this point, um, half of you have done them, half of you have not, but the half that have done them, most of you did a decent job on that, um, but there are some corrections some of you need to make. So a counterclaim, remember, is an opposite argument of your original claim and you're only going to give this in one of your paragraphs. It's creating a strong argument because it shows that you're open-minded, it shows that you understand both sides. And that's why I had you do um, three reasons for both sides way at the beginning so you already had them and you were able to give an argument for both of those sides. So it provides an alternative to the question and it only makes your um, paper stronger. You need to make sure that you have proof to back up your counterclaim, just like your other body paragraphs. You want quotes and citations from the various articles that we've already been using, and it's only one paragraph. I did have, I think, one or two students um, turn in a counterclaim that was like two or three paragraphs. This only needs to be one paragraph long. Your conclusion, which is a separate paragraph, uh, again, needs to provide a, bit, a bridge back to your focus, back to your theme, back to the position um, at the beginning on, again, why you do or do not believe Shakespeare should be taught in schools. And it helps me, the reader, see the importance of the information that you've provided and gives you that final say in what um, we're addressing and making sure that the topic or theme has been covered. And you want to make a good impression on the reader. I want to be able to look at it and say, yeah, I like this. I enjoyed it. Please make sure that, again, in your conclusion or anywhere in your paper, you are not ever using I, you, me, or we. Those are called personal pronouns. I've said this before. It's in the other notes. You don't use those in a formal paper. Um, you don't use the words in conclusion. You don't write to conclude. You might have done that when you were younger. We don't do that anymore in high school. Um, you don't write in summary or to sum up or in my opinion. And I believe in the other conclusion notes, there are um, some various uh, transitions in your resources on Canvas, there was a transition um, resource page that you can look at and, and gather some transitions that you could use in your conclusion other than the ones that are listed here. So a few last reminders. You need to make sure that you rewatch those video notes because for some of you, I can tell who has watched them and who has not. And if it is obvious, it's going to make um, an impact on your final grade. Checking your comments on Canvas will also make a um, affect your final grade because if I have um, made a comment and it's something relatively easy for you to fix and then you don't fix it on the final, um, that's a big ordeal. So you need to make sure that you go back into Canvas, look at your assignments, see what I have um, mentioned that you need to fix or what I have an issue with, and if you know how to fix it, Great. If you don't, you need to contact me and I can help you or you can just rewatch your videos and that should help you. But you need to make sure that you're fixing the errors that you've made. Your citations need to be done correctly. It is in the notes and we have done citations all year long in papers, on assignments. At this stage in the game, there is no excuse why your citations should not be done correctly. If you are not sure, you need to make sure you go back to those videos and look it up, please. Do not copy and paste. It creates a different font. So if you're using a quote, I get it. I don't want to write. I don't want to type all that out. I'm just going to copy and paste it. Do not do that because it creates a different font. And even if you highlight it and try to get it to um, 
go into a different font, it, it might not do that. And so if I see that, you're going to lose points because you didn't type out your own quote. It's not that big of a deal. All the work is done. Just go back in there and just retype your own, uh, the quote. Do not use contractions. Remember what I've said all year, contractions in a formal essay? No, contractions are for pregnant women, not for formal essays. So you need to go through, and if you have used contractions like don't or won't, um, or wouldn't, um, you need to go back and make sure that you have spelled those out. You will lose style points um, if you have contractions. Do not use I, me, we, or us anywhere. Those are personal pronouns. And in a formal essay, this is not my rule, this is a formal essay rule, you do not use those. And so again, you will lose style points if you utilize those type of pronouns. If you're having a hard time getting rid of them and you don't know how, um, email me and we can work that out. I can help you rephrase some of those sentences. So how are you going to submit this? You are going to, in your Google, you're going to open up a Google Doc all on your own and you are going to include a proper heading on the left hand side. And remember that's how we were always um, writing out our proper heading when we would do our Bricky Blunders. You're going to include your name, the date, and then the class, what hour you're in, and the assignment is your argumentative essay. Um, you're going to include a title for your essay, which is your position statement. So it's either Shakespeare should be taught in schools or Shakespeare should not be taught in high school. Um, you're going to combine all your corrected paragraphs to make one essay. So you should have those documents. Go back, copy and paste them, put them all on, a, on your Google Doc, make the corrections. Notice this word here corrected. Don't just give me the same ones that you did before because most of you, again, you might have gotten full points because at least you attempted and, and you tried, um, but I made corrections to say, okay, good attempt. You're on the right track, but now you need to fix it for the final. If you don't fix it, then you're going to lose points big time. So please make sure that you correct those paragraphs. You're going to complete an edit checklist that I will have on your Canvas page, and you're going to turn that in. This checklist is important, and yeah, all you're really doing is going through it, checking it off that you've understood or that you've done that in your own essay, because this will also serve for me, for you, for your parent, for any other administrator who, if there is an argument and saying, you know, why did I get a D on this paper? I did everything. And it'll say, well, yeah, according to your checklist, you said you did, but I can show the essay and say, look, they didn't. So it's just a reminder for you to make sure that you cover everything that needs to be done in that essay. It makes you go back and look and to make sure that you have everything that you need. And then finally, you're going to submit your paper to turnitin.com. You are not, I repeat, you're not going to put it in on Canvas. Um, there's not going to be a place for you to submit it on Canvas. You can only submit your final paper, sorry, on your turnitin.com. And everybody um, has their turnitin. That's where we've put a lot of our other papers. So this isn't anything new to you. When you go in, you, you know, get to my class, you'll see the assignment is already there. I've already created it for everyone. And um, you just upload your Google Doc. And then finally, do not wait to ask questions. Um, you know, I'm only really on the computer um, and in my class, I say, until 3, 3.30. Um, do not wait until Thursday evening to ask questions. Um, and definitely Friday, which is our last day of school, by 3 o'clock, we're done. Um, and so if you've got questions, you guys need to really be asking them, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so that you can fix those items on Thursday and Friday because you guys are not my only classes. I have four other classes of um, students who are doing work as well and I cannot devote all that time to just you guys on Thursday and Friday. I need to spread that time out because they're doing final projects as well. So please make sure that you plan ahead. Please submit something. Some points are better than nothing and this is a big chunk of your grade. So um, if you leave it completely blank. There's nothing I can do to help you. You've got to turn something in. So please at least attempt to do some sort of paper. Um, and I'm really sorry that I did not get to say goodbye to you guys face to face. I really and truly mean that. Um, I hope your freshman year, besides this 
um, was a good one and hopefully you're looking forward to next year. So I hope you've learned something in class in regards to reading, grammar, writing, anything. Um, I hope you've learned something that you can take on to next year's English. And so I hope you guys all have a great summer and hopefully I'll see you next year. So remember, spread peace, love, and joy. Bye, guys.